All irregularities will be handled by the forces controlling each dimension. Transuranic heavy elements may not be used where there is life. Medium atomic weights are available. Gold, lead, copper, jet, diamond, radium, sapphire, silver and steel. Sapphire and steel have been assigned. Yes, hello and welcome to a new Squirrel Views video. And as you've just seen, this video is on Sapphire and Steel. Um, Sapphire and Steel first appeared on air, actually. The first episode was broadcast on the 10th of July 1979 and it ran through to 31st of August 1982. Um, you know, I mean, it starred... Uh, David McCullum um, as Steele, uh, fresh off appearing in the spy thriller series The Man from Uncle, um, and Joanne Lumley as Sapphire, who'd recently been in the, again, kind of spy adventure series, uh, The New Avengers. Uh, most people's in the Marvel characters, but there was an old BBC series called The Avengers, um, which was in the 60s and black and white and was led by a character called John Steed. And then it came back as a colour series in the 1970s as the New Avengers, with his sidekicks now being Gambit, and played by Gareth Hunt and, and Purdy played by Joanna Lumley. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sapphire and Steel is an odd one. Um, I mean, even though it lasted three years, it didn't get a lot and wasn't very successful. Um, the premise of the series is that um, their Sapphire and Steel and their cohorts um, the cohorts are a bit odd, gold, lead, jet, diamond, radium and silver. Um, they are time agents, for a better word, for, for want of a better term. And when there is something has occurred to cause a breaking time or damage to the time stream, um, they're sent in to actually find out, you know, what incident occurred, what actually caused the break, or the damage, and to fix it. Um, and so I mentioned there was other characters. We saw Sapphire and Steel. Sapphire and Steel were in every episode, um, or assignment, as they were called. And each assignment was broken up into um, short episodes. Um, we in the pilot um, assignment um, we do get the appearance of the character of Lead um, and in other episodes uh, other assignments we do get the appearance of the character of Silver um, there is references um, mostly to um, Jet um, and this suggestion that there's this sort of thing between or an, previously had been maybe an on-off thing with between Steel and a female character called Jet that we never see. Um, I mean, it was planned that later on more and more of these characters are going to appear. Um, but um, because it wasn't particularly successful, that didn't happen. We only got two others, Lead and Steve Silver. Um, it was written by P. 
Peter Hammond, um, who was a TV writer and actually um, did find some success. Um, but um, I, I personally, I think that the problem that Sapphire and Steel had was that it was a series before its time. Um, it was something that didn't fit in the TV landscape, especially as it's made for kids. This was made, it was, you know, appeared on the um, uh, children's TV. Um, and there was a lot of producers or execs who thought it was um, too cerebral, you know, for kids. Kids wouldn't get it. Um, but, um, I mean, I was four when it started um, and seven when it finished and I loved it you know, you know I, I loved the fact that it I mean there was a lot of um, things that were made for kids at the time which were um, kind of talked down to kids and treated them like they were idiots and it was like you, you get the feeling that the exec in children's TV at the time had no idea, had no kids and had no idea how, what, how kids thought and what kids liked because it was great and it didn't actually talk down to kids. It didn't treat them like idiots. Yes, it was intelligent. Yes, it was cerebral, but it was understandable. I mean, it made sense to my four-year-old brain. So, I mean, um, I think there was a big problem with it. I think if it was a series that was made maybe in the 90s rather than the, you know, f a, new th a new thing for the uh, new decade of the 80s, starting, in, you know, at the end of the summer of uh, 79 uh, or in the middle of the summer, 79, um, if it was made for the 90s, I think it would have been more successful. I think it would have been accepted more. Um, but as I say, I mean, it was something that was ahead of its time. Um, and even though a lot of kids did get it and did enjoy it, including myself, for some reason, the execs that were in charge of kids TV thought it was you know too intellectual and too cerebral and kids wouldn't get it and so it wasn't very successful um, there has been an attempt I mean it, I haven't heard any of them but um, uh, Big Finish who were particularly known for doing their um, Doctor Who audio dramas have um, made uh, some um, sapphire and steel um, audio dramas um, with uh, David Warner as Steel and Susanna Harker as uh, Sapphire um, because um, John Lumley turned down the chance to actually return as a character for audio dramas and um, David McCullum's busy in America um, so yeah I mean it's a shame that it, it nobody actually picked up and tried to actually do a new version actually on screen um, you know I think it would work pretty pretty well um, but yeah um, unfortunately it was one of those short lived TV series that suffered that from execs that didn't understand it I mean it's very common these days, you know, you get um, Firefly was axed after only one season. Um, Farscape was the the Australian TV company that was making Farscape. It was the biggest thing on their channel. 
it was bringing in more viewers than anything else on their channel but for some reason they still tried, decided to axe it early um, sometimes uh, TV and movie execs just really don't understand um, when they've got something good um, you know there's so many examples I mean even in the last Squirrel Views video which I've done which is on the film Dread from 2012 the studio didn't get what they had and didn't market it properly, properly and so it ended up actually failing and not getting the sequel it deserved and I think Sapphire and Steel suffered from the same thing it was a it was a series that was before its time um, it was with ideas that didn't fit with the TV landscape at the time I mean I don't know about the actual production behind it but I mean I get the idea that especially for the time it was quite an expensive show to make because of the special effects that were in it um, so yeah I think if this if they if it if they failed to actually get it to the screen and it was kept on the back burner and actually got a chance again in the 90s as I say I mean I think it would have worked better then personally as I say I loved it and uh, yeah I mean I still enjoy watching it today um, if you've never seen it um, it's the, all the episodes are available on YouTube uh, for free so check it out um, and in the meantime um, this is Detective Squirrel out <laughs>